In a world where companies like Four Kids with their jelly donuts and invisible guns have conditioned many of us to think that English dubs that stray too far from their source material are bad, there exists a very interesting exception. It's called Ghost Stories, and despite its original Japanese version being painfully mediocre, if I'm gonna be honest, its dub is considered the stuff of legends and more memorable than its Japanese counterpart in pretty much every way. Oh, what's that? You don't believe me? Well, tell you what, here's just a little sample of what Ghost Stories has going on. Here's a clip from the Japanese version of Ghost Stories with English subs. <laughs> and here's the same scene, but in the dub. You're such brave, strong, handsome men. Have you accepted Jesus as your personal savior? No, I'm Jewish. Yeah, that's the same show, that is the same scene from the same anime, and that is the official dub that you get when you buy the officially licensed DVD or Blu-rays of Ghost Stories. And as funny as all that is, it does raise a lot of questions like, how did this happen? How did ADV get permission to do this? How did this whole thing come into being? How did Ghost Stories go from being a mildly creepy adventure series about a haunted school to this? I told you I'm going to be fine. Why are you still crying? <laughs> because these pajamas are gay. When a stronger spirit appears, the weaker spirit cowers. But all evil spirits cower before Jesus. Good, then you can do the broadcast so I can get my brains banged out by Mr. Sakata before third period. I mean, Mr. Sakata and I have a very private teacher-teacher conference we have to do this afternoon. Well, the story for how this dub came into being is honestly just as funny as the dub itself. Let me tell you all about it. To understand why the dub was made the way it was, first we gotta understand what happened to the Japanese version. Our story begins in Japan in the mid 80s. A school teacher named Toru Tsunamitsu has a hobby of collecting ghost stories and then one day he realizes that an awful lot of the ones he knows revolve around schools. So then he asks his students to write down some of the school related ghost stories that they know and pretty soon he'd have enough to warrant publishing them in a book called Gakko no Kaidan, which roughly translates to school ghost stories. Ultimately, 11 volumes of this would get published and the series would end up being a bestseller and it would inspire a miniseries in 1994, a handful of movies, a video game, and eventually, of course, a TV anime. But its best-selling source material wasn't the only reason people should have been interested in the Ghost Stories anime when it first aired. The other big reason lied in who was making this anime. Yeah, believe it or not, Ghost Stories was an anime with quite a pedigree. Let's start with the studio behind it. That would have been Studio Piero. At the time, just a few of the series that they would have been known for were Great Teacher Onizuka, Yu Yu Hakusho, and Fushigi Yugi. If we want to look even further into the future, they'd eventually handle Naruto, Bleach, Black Clover, and plenty of other super popular series. Series that make a lot of money, suffice to say. Oh, but Ghost Stories pedigree doesn't stop there, just in case you were wondering. Directing the anime is Noriyuki Abe of Great Teacher Onizuka fame. Doing the music is Kaoru Wada, and the voice cast, oh man, just let me give you some of the highlights. Probably the most well-known names it had were Takako Honda as the protagonist, Tomoko Kawakami as the female protagonist, and then there's the cat who's being voiced by, oh, you know, only one of the most iconic villains in all of Dragon Ball. But yeah, this is all to say that Ghost Stories was an anime that was meant to make money. It hailed from best-selling source material, it was being adapted by a highly successful studio who was pouring great resources into it. I mean, even if it's not a massive success, there's no conceivable reason why this anime shouldn't be at least good. Though, actually, except for maybe one, it was super boring. According to the anime's Japanese Wikipedia page, the highest rating any of its episodes ever got was a 14. Now, I know that at the surface that number might not sound completely awful, but keep in mind that Japan doesn't use the Nielsen system to calculate their viewership ratings. Instead, they have a company called Video Research, and for the sake of this video, all you need to know is that a rating above 15 is considered good enough, and a rating at or below 10 is bad. And the absolute best rating any episode of Ghost Stories got, I would like to remind you, was 14. That was Ghost Stories performing at its absolute peak. The average rating, on the other hand, was 12.2, and then the worst was an abysmal 10.6. <laughs> 
as far as Piero was concerned, Ghost Stories was nothing but a failure. They finished up the series and they never touched it again. And so for a few years, Ghost Stories would just sit there and collect dust. I can't even say it was being forgotten by Japan because to be forgotten, you gotta be known about. And if the ratings make one thing clear, it's that hardly anyone was watching it. And if not for a boom in anime licensures in North America just a few years later, it probably would have just faded into obscurity right then and there. But of course, in the early and mid 2000s, there was, sure enough, a boom in anime licensures in North America. I could and honestly should make a totally separate video about how and why this happened, but for now, suffice to say, the proven success of series like Sailor Moon and Dragon Ball, in tandem with the success of things like Toonami and all the manga that was finally getting released in English, well, it all fueled a race among licensing companies to license and dub whatever they could get their hands on, including series that didn't do particularly well in Japan. And in that vein, ADV announced in 2005 that they got the rights to ghost stories. Now, normally when a group like ADV or anyone who makes a dub buys the rights to dub a series, the Japanese studio will give them certain guidelines about what to do. But this time, that didn't happen. ADV just got told not to change the names and basic plot, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, at this point, anything else was on the table. Piero just wanted the series to make money this time, or at the very least, they wanted it to break even, and I guess they were willing to be flexible if it meant achieving that. And this is where the story, as many of us know it, begins. Ghost Stories dub script would be largely written by its ADR director, a man by the name of Stephen Foster, and I know it was him because there's a lovely shout out to him at one point. I'd like to thank my agent, my manager, Stephen Foster, for writing such a gay friendly but still mainstream script that spoke. I'll leave a link to his site in the description for any of you who want to learn more about him. He's currently writing a book, he's been in the Hot 100, he's been in Out Magazine's annual list of the most influential people. You know, he's been involved in some pretty cool projects even outside of ghost stories. Anyways, so Stephen was put in charge of the script, and I was actually able to get a hold of him for this video and get a first hand account of what the process was like and what happened. He says, quote, the studio, ADV Films at the time, had licensed this show that had bombed in Japan. The company that owned it just wanted to try to recoup some of their investment, so they said we could do anything we wanted with it. I had a reputation for writing scripts that, well, deviated from the direct translation, and thus they gave it to me. Truthfully, I just went wild with whatever I thought was funny. I had started this method of working where the actors could see the script on my monitor, and that way they could read lines as they needed to be changed instead of working off of a paper script. I went into the studio with just the translation and wrote scripts as I went. It worked with this gothic horror series Gilgamesh. I figured I could try it with comedy. The whole recording process was me just coming up with shit I thought was funny. I just made it up as I went along. The actors would chime in with a joke or a line every now and again, which is, I guess, how the rumor got started that the whole show was ad-libbed. And in a way it was. I just riffed on the visuals, the characters as I'd morphed them, and the situation. Situations. And you know what? I'm glad he mentioned the actors, because I want to talk about that for just a moment. Just like the Japanese original, the Ghost Stories dub definitely had some known names who were working on it. To list off the most well-known names in the cast, Chris Patton. Leave me alone. I'm doing my standard anime elbows up pose. Monica Real. Jesus loves me. Come on, you know the words. And Greg Ayers was the little boy. Oh my god, what the hell's happening here? These are the fastest lip-flops I've ever had to sink. So now that we know why this dub was so different from its Japanese original, Original, let's get more specific about those differences. Ghost Stories is the only anime I know about with a dub that is so different from its original that even the genre has changed. It went from being an adventure series to a dark comedy. I tweeted out a clip from the dub not too long ago and at ReaderCats replied, this dub is fucking wild. It's like someone cast a spell on an edgy American adult cartoon to make it an anime instead. And honestly, I think that just about sums it up. <laughs> what makes this all the more incredible is that all the changes in the Ghost Stories dub come from the dialogue. As far as I can see, there is not a single visual difference between the subbed and dubbed versions at all. And since the dialogue is where all the differences are, it means that by extension, the characters and the reasons why things happen the way that they do is also different. For example, here's a clip from the subbed version. What's going on is this girl brought her pet rabbit back from the dead and now he's a zombie and he's attacking everyone. Now, in the subbed 
version, she has to chant to send him back to the dead. Alright, cool. Now, uh, let's watch that same scene, but in the dub. Shirotabi, please forgive me for bringing you back to life. I know now that it could never work between us. As much as we wanted to, it could never be. Not because you're a rabbit, but because you're black. Yeah, so you see what I mean now? The result is still the same, but how we got there is completely different, and the whole dub operates like this. And then, as for the characters, I mean, obviously they're a lot more, uh, let's say, adult, but I think Momoko is the one with the most changes. In the Japanese version, she's just a quiet and polite girl, you know, nothing particularly groundbreaking here, but in the English version, on the other hand, she is a hardcore born-again Christian who likes bringing Jesus into pretty much everything. As a matter of fact, my favorite clip from the dub revolves around her. Let me show you. They were tempted by Ketura! fruit, and they knew they were Ketura, sinful and naked without Jesus. Hell. Hello, sinner. God, can you go bomb an abortion clinic or something? You just wait. When that wonderful president finishes stacking the Supreme Court, we won't have to. Don't forget what I told you about premarital sex. Abstinence only got it. So let's go ahead and talk about the reaction to this dub. Quoth Stephen Foster, Like most of the anime I did, people bitched about how much I changed it. Those that complained the loudest were the ones who didn't even see it, of course. But then the rational anime fans, not rabid anal otakus, watched it and fell in love with it. Non-anime fans loved it. If more anime was like this, I'd watch more anime and comments like that on the boards. YouTube's taking it down now, but there was this one compilation by this guy named Ilrio or something like that. It had, no bullshit, four and a half million views. That was wild. It thrills me to this day that it's this cult quotable classic. I then asked him how the Japanese felt about his dub and he responded, Quote, there were rumors that they were gonna do a second season because the English dub did so well. So yeah, I think it's safe to say that the people who watched it ended up falling in love with this dub. When I asked Steven how he felt about the dub's unique cult status, he told me, quote, Oh, like I said, I love it. That was something I poured my heart and soul in. I gave it my complete creative comedic self and that resonated with a ton of people. With most of the anime, I held back because you have to. You have to respect the source material but this one, they took the reins off. I didn't do cons when I was in the business, but I went to a big one a year or so ago and the audience was filled with ghost stories lovers. They were, hands down, the most enthusiastic, the sweetest, the most wonderful people to meet. And the cast will tell me about things they hear. Greg Ayers just sent me a photo of a group of con goers who were dressed up like the ghost stories crew. Down to the embroidery, Leo had on his gimme cap. Made my day. And on that note, I mean, honestly, that's it. That's the story of the Ghost Stories dub. That is the story of the most mold-breaking dub in the entire anime industry. And I know that's a bold statement, but I mean, have you watched it? It's a bold dub. As a closing note, I asked Steven about his favorite line in the dub, and he told me, quote, I have to confess, I don't go back and watch my work, but Ghost Stories? I'll check it out on YouTube sometimes, mostly because the cast delivered the lines so brilliantly. That stuff is still funny to this day, and it's been, what, 15 years? I like the lines everybody else does. Think of a big black man chasing you! <laughs> Well, he's not racist. Uh, I guess not. He's only 0.2 seconds faster. Whatever. Just fill the hole, hole filler. His funny little requests. Touch me. His reprimands. Touch me harder. Luckily, I can read Barricade. It's hard to pick just one. The show was wall-to-wall -wall jokes, especially toward the end. At the end, I just went crazy. I like that even the walk-on parts got really good lines to say. Mamako, what is Ketura doing? No clue. Lunchtime, BJ? I'm in, dude. It's 4.30. School is finally over. Time to go home, load up that bong, and watch Pokemon! Everybody who worked on that show had a good time. It was a little bit of a drag, because when we finished, we all knew, well, this is never gonna happen again. Who's gonna take care of these little Hey, I've got an idea. Let's end this episode with a happy moral. Like, if you leave children behind, pay your child support on time. Deadbeat dads are not cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! 
Oh, it may be blue now, but soon it will be redder than Republican Texas. I can't even look at it. See, right now, I'm even turning away, not looking at it. You're weird. No, I'm serious, bitch. I swear to God, blue.